Hello. Today we're going to focus on intertemporal utility. Unlike our traditional setup, where we focus on tangible goods, such as apples and oranges, here we focus on consumption in two different time periods. For instance, we could be looking at consumption today versus consumption one year from today, and the happiness each bring to us. Our utility functions will look very similar to the past. In this case, the only difference is that we're plugging in new variables. Instead of good x1 and good x2, we look at good c1 and good c2. c1 would be the amount of consumption I consume today versus c2, the amount of consumption I consume a year from today, for instance. The budget constraint will also look a little different. Let's compare. Our traditional budget constraint is P1X1 plus P2X2 equals M. Our new intertemporal budget constraint will be C1 plus C2 over 1 plus rho equals M1 plus M2 over 1 plus rho. Consumption in period 1 and consumption in period 2 are both composite goods, meaning we take all the consumption of different goods in period 1 and analyze it as one variable. So if I buy apples, oranges, bananas, mangoes, all of those we're saying is one variable now, and that's for both states of the world. What this 1 plus rho equation does is bring consumption tomorrow into today's terms. Rho, then, is our real interest rate. What we mean by a real interest rate and why we use it here is that we're saying we could have taken the money in period one and invested it for some real interest rate, rho, to bring to a future value. So in order to take this value back to our present value, we must divide by the amount that we could have got in return based on our real interest rate. That being said, there's a formula to figure out this, this rho variable. 1 plus rho equals 1 plus the nominal interest rate over 1 plus the inflation rate. Let's take a look at this specific example, and hopefully it will make a little bit more sense. To start, let's find 1 plus rho. 1 plus rho in this case is going to be equal to 1 plus 0.1, or our 10% nominal interest rate, over 0.1 plus 1 again, because our inflation rate is also 10%. This means 1 plus rho is equal to 1. Let's plug back into our budget constraint then. This means C1 plus C2 equals M1 plus M2. We can standardize given that our real interest rate has effectively no change on the value of our money. From there, we can solve this pretty similarly to our classic setup with Cobb-Douglas. To start, let's take a look at this M1 and M2 dynamic. In this case, he gets no money in period one, so M1 would be zero, and he gets $1,000 in period two, so M2 would be 1,000. This means C1 plus C2, in this specific case, is equal to 1,000. Let's now also take a look at our utility function. Let's find our MRS specifically. Our MRS will be the marginal utility of consumption today over our marginal utility of consumption tomorrow. What this ends up being is C2 over C1. We can equate C2 over C1 to our price ratio, which will be 1, the price of good 1, over 1, over 1 plus rho. the price of good two. When we multiply this out, 
it ends up being equal to one plus rho. In this case, one plus rho we found to be one. So C2 over C1 equals one. This means C2 equals C1. Plugging back in here, we can find that C1 plus C1 then equals 1,000. So 2C1 equals 1,000, or C1 equals 500. If C1 equals 500, C2 also equals 500. These would be our preferences for consumption today and consumption tomorrow.